there are a number of uh, kind of dogmas about language which I think are being systematically refuted, and they're held by linguists too, I should say, not just in the general public, which are probably false, and which I think are being undermined by current research. Uh, this is a minority view. I'm not speaking for the profession. Uh, uh, the introductory comment said that I'm supposed to be contrarian, so I try to keep to that. Uh, but uh, for example, one, one general assumption about language, uh, almost a dogma in philosophy, uh, uh, common understanding, uh, linguistics, uh, psychology, is that language is primarily a means of communication and that it evolved as a means of communication. Uh, probably that's totally false. Uh, it seems that language is uh, evolved and is designed as a mode of uh, creating and uh, interpreting thought. It's a system of thought, basically. It can be used to communicate. Uh, everything people do can be used to communicate. You can. You communicate by your hairstyle, you know, style of walk, everything. And yes, language can be used to communicate, but it doesn't seem to be part of its design. Its design seems to be radically different, and in fact, even seems to undermine communication. If you look at carefully at the structure of language, you find case after case right at the core of language design where there are conflicts between uh, what would be efficient for communication and what is efficient for the specific biological design of language. And in every case that's known, the communicative efficiency is sacrificed. It, it just isn't a consideration. And I think that's a, that's, a con that's a conclusion that has very widespread significance. It, in order to establish it, you have to look at technical work. It's not the kind of thing you can explain in two minutes of you know, exposition. But it's not profound, it's not quantum physics. A half an hour would certainly suffice. Uh, and I think it's a pretty far-reaching consequence. Uh, another uh, general belief about language, again, almost a dogma in uh, all the relevant fields, philosophy, uh, linguistics, and so on, is that the meaningful, the minimal meaningful elements in language, sort of word-like things, uh, pick out entities in the extramental world. So the word, say, river, picks out the Charles River and so on, something that a physicist could identify. That turns out to be true for animal systems. Uh, animal communication systems, the symbols that appear, the actions that are carried out, do apparently have a one-to-one -one correlation with uh, mind-independent events. So some particular call of a monkey will be related to leaves fluttering, predators coming, sort of, uh, I'm hungry, you know, some hormonal change. It's just not true of language. Lin linguistic elements do not have that property. Actually, this was understood by Aristotle. Uh, it was understood in the 17th and 18th centuries. Interesting work on it. Uh, the entities that we construct in our communicate discourse, expression, interpretation are a largely mental, uh, partially mental objects. There are ways in which they are modes of, in which we interpret phenomena, but they don't pick out entities in the world that a, a natural scientist could identify without looking into our minds. Now that tells us a lot about the nature of language and about our own, our own nature. Our, our language is uh, the core human property. I mean, this is, was understood by Darwin, by a long tradition before him. And it's very different from the way it's usually conceived. I think those are uh, among the conclusions that have uh, pretty widespread significance. Let me stress again the very minority view uh, very few linguists would agree with this, but I think over time, I suspect it will become clear. Mm -hmm.